Hello and welcome to part one of my C Sharp chess tutorial. In this tutorial, we will program the chess game you see on your screen. It handles all the special moves like castling, both kingside and queenside. It also handles pawn promotion and capturing en passant. When a player manages to checkmate the opponent and win the game, this end screen shows up. It displays the winning player and gives the option to either play again or exit. The game also handles stalemate correctly and other ways the game can end in a draw. This includes insufficient material, threefold repetition, and the 50 move rule. At least to begin with, we will develop the game to be played by two human players on the same computer. But if there is enough demand for it, we could add some computer controlled players as well. All right, now that we've seen what the final game will look like, let's open up Visual Studio and get started. From here, Select create a new project, search for blank solution and choose this template. If it doesn't show up, then try changing the language filter to all languages. OK, now click next and give your solution a name. I'll call mine chess. I chose an empty solution because we'll use two different projects for this game. First, let's add a class library to our solution. To do that, right click on your solution in the Solution Explorer, go to Add, and then New Project. Here, we'll pick the C -sharp class library project template. Let's call it Chess Logic. For the target framework, I'll be using .NET 6.0. A newer version should also work just fine. An older version, however, may not support all the features I'll be using. We will write all the rules of chess, including how the pieces move, inside this chess logic project. But we need another project for the user interface. This time, we'll pick the template called WPF Application. Call it Chess UI. And then preferably choose .NET 6.0 or any newer version. The Chess UI project will contain the user interface for our game. It is responsible for showing the game on the screen and handling user input from the players. Okay, let's open the project properties for Chess Logic. And look under Build. Here you may find a setting called Nullable. This feature is supposed to help you avoid null reference exceptions, but we won't use it. So go ahead and disable it. For the Chess UI project, we do exactly the same. All right, next we can make Chess UI the startup project. The Chess UI project also needs a reference to Chess Logic. So right click on Chess UI, choose Add, 
Project Reference. Then check Chess Logic and hit OK. Now Chess UI knows about Chess Logic and it can use all the code inside it. Perfect. Let's import the assets for this game. We'll put them inside an assets folder in the Chess UI project. OK, here are all the assets we need for the game. You can download them from the link in the description. We have an image of the board itself, two custom cursors, an icon, and an image for the black and white version of each chess piece. Select all the assets, then drag and drop them into the assets folder in Visual Studio. Next, select all of them, right-click, go to Properties, and set Build Action to Resource. This will embed the assets inside the game's final executable. All right, let's make sure that the assets have been imported correctly. If it isn't open already, go ahead and open mainwindow.saml. I'll just change the layout here. And then we'll set the window's width and height to 600. We also want the window to use our icon. And we'll set the main grid's background to our board asset. OK, let's start the program. You should now see a window with the chess icon and the board. At this point, we've set up everything we need to program a nice chess game. In the next part, we'll add some simple classes to the chess logic project. See you then.